The world of landscape photography mobile phone apps can be totally overwhelming. There's so much choice out there at the moment and there's an awful lot of apps that pretty much do the same thing as well, which means the, the scope of choice out there is just absolutely vast. So I thought on today's video, I'd give you a quick rundown on the actual apps that I use and the ones that I've come to really value over the last few years. Let's start with Clear Outside, which for me is probably the app that I use more than any other when it comes to my landscape shooting. And that's because it's a weather app that's actually accurate. Amazing, I know. Um, there's so much choice when it comes to weather photography apps out there. It's really, really daunting, I think. And fundamentally, what we're looking for is accuracy. And I've used my fair share of apps over the years, and there's so many that are just anything but accurate. But Clear Outside is accurate more often than not, and it's free. What more do you need to hear, really? What I particularly like about Clear Outside is that it's very simple to use, yet very powerful at the same time. It allows you to set your location, and then essentially you can scroll down a really detailed list of weather variables on an hourly basis, and you can kind of scroll ahead a few days as well, so you can start to build that element of planning into your landscape shooting. I think some of the variables such as cloud cover are phenomenally useful. It gives you a total cloud percentage, but also then breaks it down into low, medium and high levels. But it's so much more than that. You can look at sunrise, sunset times, moonrise, moonset times, moon phase, uh, golden hour, blue hours and this. You can look at rain with the, uh, the amount of rain on an hourly basis, but also the percentage um, likelihood of that rain occurring. You can look at temperature, wind speed and direction, um, dew point, fog, visibility. There's just so much in there and it's phenomenally powerful. And it really, for me, gives all I need in order to make reasonably good weather predictions to allow me to pick my landscape photography locations. The next app in my arsenal is Photo Pills. Now, this is quite an expensive app. I believe when I purchased it, it was about £10. I'm not sure what the current price is, but as far as apps go, that's quite expensive. But if you actually reframe that in terms of landscape photography equipment, that's really, really cheap considering the value it delivers. We, as landscape photographers, will often go out and spend an awful lot of money on filters, tripods, uh, lenses, etc but 10 pounds for the planning uh, features that this gives you is a drop in the ocean. So I don't think photographers should really um, feel too hard done by by that price because this app is phenomenally good value. Photo Pills is quite overwhelming in terms of the scope of tools that it provides you. I mean, to be honest, I've probably only used about 50% of what it gives me. Um, it's kind of like a Swiss army knife of photography tools, I think, and that's a good way to think about it. Um, but for me, the most useful feature in there is the planner tool, and this is fantastic. It enables you to take a map view and drop pins into specific locations and see how the sun rises and tracks through the sky and then sets at any given location. So you can really start to plan times for shoots um, with the direction of light in mind. What's particularly useful is you can, you can forward plan this to any date during the year to really start to make a hit list of locations that will work well at specific times, at specific times of year. But the app also allows you to save those locations so you don't easily forget them. Um, and this hit list approach is phenomenally powerful. It, um, it really enables you to um, work to the, low, the weather conditions and then look across your hit list of locations that work well at that particular time of year and really focus in on them. There are a few other apps that do similar things to this. I use Sun Surveyor as well. Um, that is a paid for app. I think it's a bit cheaper than Photo Pills, but that is really, really powerful as well. And it works in a similar way. And the Photographer's Ephemeris is another well-known tool that does pretty much the same thing. I think pretty much all of these apps are much of a muchness. The only thing that really for me gives Photo Pills maybe the edge is the other features that it delivers. 
So PhotoPills also gives you augmented reality for the sun, moon, and the Milky Way, the night sky. And this is so, so powerful. Um, only in the recent last few months have I actually realized just how powerful this is. But it enables you to scout a location, hold up your phone, and use the augmented reality to track exactly where the sun is gonna rise and set and where it's gonna be in the sky in regards to the actual scenery and the landscape around you. And this is very, very powerful. You can forward plan this to any date of the year as well. Um, so I think this is very, very undervalued. I use it all the time now. If I go to any location that I think of it's got any kind of potential, I will plan exactly where the light is gonna be for any given moment in time. And it enables me to take that element of um, guesswork out of it. I, I can go to a location and know precisely during a, a, any given day, at any time during the year, when it will work at its best. The app also has some really easy to digest sunrise and sunset and moon phase tables, which gives you a nice easy reference point to plan ahead based on those variables. Uh, the app also has an exposure calculator, which is really good for calculating those long exposures using ND filters. It allows you to put in your baseline um, exposure without the ND applied and then convert that so you know what short speed you need to use for any given ND really really useful takes the guesswork and the mathematics out of it and um, the app also has a range of hyperfocal depth of field field of view distance to object features i'll be honest i haven't used them all that much but i can see them being very very useful if you really want to deep dive into getting your focal range and your sharpness absolutely spot on using those techniques Finally, there's a star trails feature, which is quite simplistic, but it allows you to kind of visualize how long your, your actual trails will be for any given exposure length. There's also a spot stars feature, which allows you to quickly calculate the 500 rule, what short speeds you need to give for any given aperture and uh, focal range. Takes a little bit of the mathematics out of it if you're feeling a little bit slow. Um, and also there's a time-lapse feature, which is really useful as well, um, particularly when you're vlogging like um, I do and you need to try and do some time-lapse b-roll you can do a quick uh, calculation in here and find out exactly how long you need to shoot for and at what intervals. Moving on there's two other apps that I use for exposure calculations for long exposures um, they are the Lee Filters app the official Lee Filters app and exposure calculator now they pretty much do the same thing and they actually cover the same ground as the exposure calculator within photo pills but both of these apps are free so if you're reluctant to fork out for photo pills either of these two could be a good option starting with um, the leaf filters app this is good if you use leaf filters it's specifically set up for those filters and it only works to six stop 10 stop and 15 stop uh, intervals which is their products essentially it's ultra simplistic it just gives you two dials on your screen you change your baseline shutter speed and select the ND that you want and it will give you the respective exposure you need and shutter speed for any of their ND products. It's a bit simplistic though, so actually probably out of the two, exposure calculator is probably the more powerful. Um, it gives you much more uh, kind of control over the ND um, values that you input you can use two stop three stop four stop uh, nds for example and um, it also has a really nice feature to change the actual uh, display based on daylight and nighttime settings so it's um yeah it's a nice little app that i think both of them are good i kind of use both of them here and there depending on how i feel if you shoot seascapes, then really you've got to get a good grasp on the tide situation in any given location. So for this, I use an app called Tides Near Me, which is free, um, which is always nice. It's fairly simplistic, but to be honest, it gives me all the details I need. It simply tells me when the low and high tide points are gonna occur, and it allows me to view this up to a week in advance, which is generally, for my purposes, 
quite adequate. It seems to have really good coverage on locations where it measures the tide um, at. So for me, it's, it's, it's a simple app, but it gives me all the details I need to plan my seascape shooting. Finally, a great free app that I'm using an awful lot at the moment is View Ranger, and this is particularly powerful for planning and tracking hiking routes into more remote locations. So if you're ever thinking of going off into areas you're not familiar with to try and shoot landscape photography, it can feel a little bit intimidating sometimes, but an app like this is fantastic for pre-planning those trips. The maps it provides are highly detailed with great topography, hiking routes, points of interest marked out. But you can also pre-plan your routes to a great degree of accuracy and actually download routes uploaded by other individuals as well. You can also download those maps entirely offline if you're concerned about phone signals. So overall, it's a fantastic package and perfect for those adventures and hikes into unknown territory. There's no getting away from the fact that good mobile phone apps are increasingly important for landscape photography. You can spend all the money you want to on camera equipment, but what makes the difference more often than not is effective planning. It's knowing when the light is gonna be favorable and unfavorable, when the weather conditions are gonna be favorable and unfavorable. And that ability to plan that with a higher degree of accuracy can only translate into positive things. So I believe the apps that I ran through with you today have enabled me to do that. But there's a cautionary kind of aspect to this. I think also there's a real risk of paralysis by analysis when it comes to mobile phone apps. You can download every app in the, under the sun and be bamboozled with the, the sheer amount of information and contradicting information in some circumstances, particularly with weather apps. And it can almost deter you from going out sometimes. It can make you kind of seek perfection, which is impossible with landscape shooting. So I, w I do feel that it's important to use these apps, but only select a small number that you trust and avoid falling into the trap of filling your mobile phone with hundreds of these apps and totally frying your brain by looking at all of them. Also, as you build experience as a landscape photographer, don't forget that sometimes the apps get it wrong and there's a lot to be said for good old fashioned instinct, gut instinct based on experience. And if you do landscape photography enough, Sometimes you can build that instinct and it can totally contradict what your apps are telling you. So don't rely on them too heavily. Sometimes just go with the flow and what feels right. So that brings me to a close on today's video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope these insights on the mobile phone apps that I use prove useful. I've been asked this question an awful lot, so I thought putting together this short little video would be useful and help you with your own planning of landscape photography shoots. If you've got any thoughts on the apps that I do use or any suggestions for apps that I should use, pop them down in the comments below. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts because there's almost, it's almost certain that there's plenty of great apps that I haven't yet used just waiting to be discovered. So yeah, your thoughts on that would be fantastic. Um, I haven't been able to get much landscape photography shooting done lately for two reasons. One, I'm in the middle of a house move, so my life is a little bit crazy at the moment. But two, it's still summer and it still sucks. So I'm struggling for motivation a little bit. But autumn is drawing ever closer, so we do have some light at the end of that tunnel. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for today. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you all next time where hopefully I'm not just sat in a field burning to a crisp. Goodbye.